Hey guys, so welcome to my video. Uh, today we're going to be turning a Raspberry Pi 2 into a fully fledged NAS server that actually backs itself up um, at a scheduled time to protect your data. So what is a NAS server? A uh, NAS server is basically network attached storage. So for you guys at home, that means you can just plug your Pi into your home router, get some USB pens um, or some USB hard drives, plug that into the Pi and it's a really, really good um, and easy way of uh, dumping your files from your laptop or your um, tablet or phone onto the Pi and you know that they're uh, available to anybody around your home network. Another uh, great use for NAS is actually uh, connecting to media centers like XBMC or Kodi um, or Plex. Um, and because of this, because the, the amount of power that a Pi uses, so you're only sort of looking at sort of three or four quid a year uh, in power, you can have it on 24 seven. It is literally, it's a set and forget. So plug it into your router and forget all about it. So it really is as easy as that. So uh, let's look at how we get that done. So as with every um, video we do, we're always going to do a Pi upgrade. So first thing to do is log in as Pi and the password is Raspberry if you've left it as default. <clears throat> so we'll do a sudo apt get update and sudo apt get upgrade. So this is kind of a dual command in one. It kind of does the both. So it saves you typing it out again. So depending upon the speed of your internet connection, you should go through in a few minutes. I've speeded it up just to sort of get through it really. So sudo apt get install ntfs hyphen 3g let that run so that loads it that loads up the components that you need um, for ntfs filing system and then what we we'll do now is we we'll just change that I'm just being lazy with my typing so uh, sudo apt get install samba and we want samba dash common dash bin uh, and Samba basically allows us to connect to Windows shares. So that's a nice, easy, quick one. So sudo fdisk-l. And what this does is this actually shows us what's connected to the Pi, what the Pi has recognized. So in our case here, we've got SDA1. And that is format is NTFS, which is correct. We also have SDB1, and that is also format and is NTFS. And that uh, shows that we've got two devices connected. So next we need to make some directories. So sudo make the slash media slash USB HDD1. And we also need to do another one for two, because we've got two disks. And then we need to mount them. So sudo mount dash T auto. So we're going to use the SDA1 and mount that to the uh, hard drive one and then mount the second device to the second uh, share. And we're going to just create a, an open folder on there as well called shares. Next, what we're going to do is make a copy of our Samba config file just in case we screw it up or you've got any custom changes in there yourself. So just do a, a CP on that. And then next use uh, nano to edit the file. So what you want to do is find terms security equals user and take the hash out that makes the line active. And also we need to do encrypt passwords equals yes. It does say true, but the documentation states it has to be yes. So just at the end of the file, what we need to do here is basically configure it to um, actually access those shares. 
So uh, all these are um, typed out in the description, so you don't need to um, copy that. And you can use a program called Test Palm just to prove that that file is um, actually working. So next we're going to set the SMB password for Pi. So uh, you put that as whatever you want to do. And then we're going to restart the Samba service. Next, we're going to edit the FS tab with the command that was on the screen. And this basically um, allows the Pi to mount the folders when it boots back up. Because when you mount them up by command line, um, they're only valid for that session. As soon as you reboot it, they've gone. And then do a restart. So we're coming back up now. And as we can see here, we can see that the USB drives that we've just created are now being mounted. So we'll just pop into Windows, go into Network, and there's his Raspberry Pi. There's his shares. So what we'll do quickly is uh, we'll just create a folder just to prove that our write permissions are working. So test, there you go. And we'll just create a text document. Hello world. And we'll go into that. Hi there. And we'll just save that. And that's saved successfully. So that proves his permissions are working fine. So that's that section done. Next, we're going to move on to setting a static IP address. So simply run uh, sudo nano slash etc slash network slash interfaces. And you want to take the DHCP section out because that will give you a different address every time and then force it to an address on your own network. So I've used 1.50 there. Save that out and then we can use if config just to um, just to prove that the IP address has changed uh, once you restart that. And that's that bit done. So next we're going to configure the uh, backups. So log into your Pi if you have uh, rebooted it. So do sudo apt get install rsync. So this installs the necessary components. And then we're going to uh, edit a cron job. So simply put these uh, commands here into the file. So what we're saying is basically at five o'clock in the morning, copy everything from the first drive to the second drive and make sure that there is a slash at the end that is not a typo that's quite important so just to prove that the copying is working uh, you can just type this in uh, and that will run it now rather than wait until five o'clock in the morning to see if it's actually worked and as we can see it's copied everything across So that's the end of the video and you should have a fully functioning uh, Raspberry Pi NAS server. So I've got a lot more videos coming up. Um, I've got a second uh, Pi 2 uh, and I'm going to cover how to uh, use Kodi and uh, Plex to talk to the NAS server that we've just created in this video. So subscribe if you want to keep watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up. It does help. and. Please uh, drop me a comment or any questions and I'll try to help if I can. So thanks for watching and see you next time.